Hi everyone, I'm going to try to do a quick tour of my garden. I have seven gardens, and the reason I have them is because I do not want to mow as much grass as I need to. There's no reason to. If you have the space and you can do it, do gardening. So let's start off with the potted plants. These are two squash plants uh, that came out of the compost, grew out of the compost that I planted the impatience in. And here's some cilantro. You either love it or you hate it. I absolutely love it. This is my vintage glider couch with a an adjustable picnic table back. There's the wing nut to release it, and I renovated that years ago. Here's what's left of some bleeding hearts, and here is feverfew coming up for the next year, right next to nasturtium and my very old chive plants, probably 20 years old. Here's the mature fever few. And these are wax bells. Those were a gift from a friend years and years ago. That's an old plant, and it's not in a great spot. It doesn't grow very well there. Pink is still be. This is what's left of this past early, well, mid-spring's uh, wood hyacinth. That's an old spider board. I had about 10 of those plants in here and I took them out because they just flop over. I put them in the woods early in the spring when they were first coming up and they're doing amazingly well. And here's the firecracker plant. That's a nickname for bee bomb or bergamot. I'm not sure what this is. If anybody knows, let me know. That was a gift from a friend and it's just a nice part shade, part sun plant. This is the baby of a Japanese flowering apricot, and right here is the adult. And that was also a gift from a friend probably 20 years ago. This tree right here is probably fifth generation. They don't last long. You can't eat the fruit, but the flowers are absolutely beautiful. This rose bush, which is used by a lot of landscaping companies to uh, get some quick color for offices and such was given to me by a friend and it's doing very well. These are Coreopsis, Moonbeam Coreopsis. And I planted these in the garden ages ago. They disappeared for a while and depending on the drought or rain situation, they tend to come back. And this year they're coming back pretty well. There's some more in here. I don't know if you can see that amongst the, the astilbe. <clears throat> That's Echinacea. No, I'm sorry. That's um, Black-Eyed Susan. Those love my garden. That's my favorite Dahlia. I've been looking at it at the garden store for a couple of weeks now, so I finally got one. And I have some Elysium that I'm going to put in there with it. More Feverfew. That's Echinacea. These are Stellodora lilies. Very hardy. They can handle any kind of soil, it seems, and they just grow like crazy. That's fennel, beautiful fennel. I love the, the new shoots, the new growth that comes out. It almost looks like a, a foxtail. Uh, when I see a tree growing in my garden, I let it go and see what it can do because it might turn into a real nice shade tree. The garden can always change. Gardens are always changing anyways. This right here is a uh, milkweed. It's a garden variety milkweed. It's not doing so great, but again, the weather makes a big difference. This is celeric. It's been in my garden for ages. I always have to top it because if I don't, it'll grow about 10 feet tall and just not look so good. This is blue thistle right here. Here's some more over here. And these are black irises. They're about 20 years old. They've been through a lot in this garden. They used to bloom profusely. Uh, they haven't in the past couple of years. Last year they bloomed once. So I added some compost and manure. And hopefully I'll get something out of them at some point at another time. And there's an accidental, looks like maybe a pumpkin plant coming up that came out of the compost. There's some more echinacea. 
this plant right here was also a gift. It's called turtle, and it's an orchid. And it doesn't bloom until September, and even with a frost, it will continue to bloom through, oh, probably the end of October, depending on the weather. And there's my new growth lilac. The original, the original lilac bush was knocked over by a heavy snow. So I took a chance and I cut it back pretty severely. And now I have all these suckers that come up and I get beautiful blooms. That's my cat Sophie right there. She's a beautiful girl. Yes, she is. This is sweet woodruff. It took off like crazy this year and looks absolutely fantastic. There's a black eyed Susan right there. Accidental. Grew on its own. Down here we have what's left of the peonies, and I have another one in here that needs to be moved. So in the fall, I'm going to move this peony out. The Indian bloodroot, I can't believe how much it's taken off. It's such an incredible plant. I grabbed some off the stream while fishing one day, and <coughs> brought it home and planted it in the yard. And here we are almost 20 years later, and it just grows everywhere. Here it is right here in the walkway. It's a lovely plant, and I won't do anything to stop it. It can go wherever it wants. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the protected list, but I believe it might be. Here's what's left of the bleeding hearts, along with some really large, beautiful pastas. I have about four or five different kinds. I'm not sure exactly what their names are. Here's some ivy that I picked by a handful one time, put it in my pocket, planted it in the yard, and it's growing. They're past blooming, but I have pink lily of the valley in here. You can't see the bloom, but they're absolutely beautiful. This incredible plant is called the money plant. And that was another pick by hand, put in pocket, bring home and plant kind of thing. I was out on a walk not far from my house and I saw them growing wild on the side of the road. So I said, well, I'm going to grab some seeds and mix them with the Pachysandra and the Lily of the Valley is the absolutely gorgeous Indian bloodroot. Completely wild plant. Here's some more hostas. And more hostas. And this is a giant boxwood that needs to be trimmed. I spent 16 hours in the garden last weekend getting everything done by hand. So when you do it by hand, it lasts longer. And uh, that was the one job I didn't do was get the clippers out. But I'll get to him. He's not looking too bad. He's kind of wild and woolly. More hostas, some Rose Sharon. These are grapes that don't produce, but they have a flower that is very fragrant, fragrant, and they were here when I moved here. So I just left them on this old fence, and as it falls down, I just prop it up or make it look neat. More hostas and bleeding hearts. Great big hostas and bleeding hearts. Now this is my pride and joy. This is my golden seal patch. I bought this golden seal from Hazoo man named Hazu and uh, HSU in Wisconsin about 20 years ago and I planted it with hopes of creating an entire yard full of it. It didn't really work out because this whole area, you can see the soil is really dry right now because we haven't had rain. It's feast or famine with the water. Um, but what I did do this year and last year was uh, cut back on a lot of these uh, lily of the valley because I want the golden seal to really take off and you can see it's it's a beautiful plant and that right there will be a red berry in another month or so and I don't use it it's been sitting here all these years but I think this year I'm going to start using it and we have more hostas and bleeding hearts the bleeding hearts in this garden there must be maybe 25 plants. They all came from one little plant that was in a dump from a friend who was trying to get rid of some things. 
in their yard and it just happened the roots just happened to be in there so I propagated it and here we are and there's some more hostas and the deer have been picking at them what else is new but that's okay it's nice to have wild kingdom in your yard there's your Sharon more hostas you can see why I would plant so many hostas because at one time I used to mow all of this and it was not pretty I just thought you know what I'd rather have a garden to lightly maintain than take the chance of twisting my ankle coming down the hill with a mower uh, this is an area that is prone to extreme dryness and I have tried to plant it for years just can't seem to do anything with it so I let it go back to the wild and I'm glad I did because the black caps are almost ready and there are some raspberry bushes in here too and I absolutely love my seasonal berries so I just did this work recently just because the yard is sinking it was all backfill so I cleaned this up to make it look a little nicer put some uh, lily of the valley in there they can do what they want there they're free to roam and here is some um, periwinkle that was given to me by a friend it's a new project I'm working on it's an old outdoor table that was rusty so I got my rust-oleum and I'm painting it coastal sage there's some more black caps my yard is full of berries and I'm pretty lucky there's a lot of wild in here but with a good uh, manual weed whacker I just uh, just head out there and push the bushes down so I can walk through and pick my berries these would be easy to get to and there's a honeysuckle bush that came with the property and this, this is what's left of the um, oh I keep wanting to call it wild phlox but it's not it's um, Dane's rocket Oh, here's what's left of the Dane's Rocket right here. We got one hanging on. And we have thousands of these plants in this yard. Right in this area. And when they bloom, oh, they bloomed about two weeks ago. Oh, just magnificent. Raspberries. And I have tons of them out there. I can't wait to pick them. And the blackheads look like they're just doing magnificently this year. And here's some new raspberry canes right here. Very happy to see that. And here comes Sophie. She's coming down to see what's going on. <laughs> well, that's it. That's my garden. Oh, here's one more thing that's kind of new that came in off the road. This is Daisy Fleabane. And I saw a couple other plants out there that I might want to propagate in the yard. Very pretty. Have a good day.